Welcome back to Rev Solutions. Today I've taken out the Honda NC750X DCT edition. This is the automatic edition of this bike. It's really, really interesting. You'll see how I get on with that a little bit later in the video. Um, so this engine, it's a four stroke, eight valve, single overhead cam, and it is a parallel twin engine. Um, I haven't ridden a parallel twin for a while, but you can feel it. The, the popping of the engine it, it, it's definitely a lot different to riding your normal four cylinders uh, the engine displacement on this bike is 745 cc the it's an electronic ignition like you get on all bikes these days you've got a 4.1 litre oil capacity on this bike now with regards to the power the max power of this bike is 40.3 kilowatts at 6250 rpm now that sounds quite low, however this bike only revs to 8,000 RPM, so it's quite a low revving bike when it comes to it. With regards to the torque, you're looking at 68 Newton meters at 4,750 RPM. So again, it's right bang in the middle of your rev range on this bike. Now when it comes to the ground clearance, this is an adventure bike, okay? So you're looking at 165 millimeter ground clearance, which isn't massive, but you're gonna get up and down curbs a little bit of off-roading quite comfortably here uh, the seat height is 830 millimeters now for me being five foot seven it's relatively comfortable you do have to just slide slightly off the bike uh, but i'll get into that i'll sit on the bike in the moment now the fuel capacity you're looking at 14.1 liters of fuel for this bike which isn't a massive tank it's quite a respectable size now when it comes to the front tire on this bike you run in a 120 70 17 inch at the rear, you've got a 160, so it's a little bit smaller than your normal sports bikes and sports tourers, uh, and that's a 60, 17 inch again. The front braking system compiles of a 320 millimeter single wavy hydraulic disc with two piston calipers, and this is a two channel ABS system braking on this one. So unlike most bikes where you've got your, your twin front discs, this has only got one front disc doesn't really make much of a difference though because when you pull that front brake you, you do stop quite comfortably so to be honest when I got on the bike and started riding it I, I didn't even know it had one one disc really it's quite a good brake on that one and the rear again you're looking at a single disc you've got a 240 millimeter again wavy hydraulic disc with a two piston caliper and that one is also ABS so you've got a decent braking system on this bike but it is only single single calipers and single single disc which is uh, quite different i would have thought it would have had two at the front one at the rear but for a 750 but never mind um it's train chain driven like most bikes these days i think it's only bmw really that put the uh the shafts on their bikes now the weight of this bike the curb weight comes at 230 kilograms you can feel that when you're maneuvering this bike about you got obviously your grab rail here for your luggage your pillions you can feel that weight but as soon as you get the bike moving it is so effortless it flicks and turns like it weighs about 150 kilograms being a sports bike almost so the weight isn't an issue I, although i do think if it was to fall over you're going to have a problem picking it up you're going to have to perfect the technique of getting this bike back up now the tank on this bike is actually at the rear at the front we pop it opens up you got your tools and also a 21 litre storage tank which will fit a motorcycle helmet quite comfortably it is waterproof it's got a nice waterproof gasket around there so you put your valuables in there clicks down flick it the other way and it opens up the rear seat you got your fuel tank there so it's, it's back to front on this bike compared to most normal bikes but it works really well now suspension, you're looking at a 41 millimeter telescopic fork at the front. Now at the rear, you've got a monoshock damper with a pro link swing arm, and it's got 150 millimeters of travel for that. It is quite a tough suspension for the rear. I've quite liked it to uh, my sports bike in all fairness. It does, it's not very soft off-road, off -road, but you, you can adjust that. So that might be something to do for the future. Now for the front and rear wheels, they're both multi-spoke aluminium cast wheels and they are they are quite nice wheels. Uh, nice simple maintenance, no loads of wires to get clean and everything, so they're quite nice. The gearbox, six speed, it's an automatic and the manual. 
you've got a little switch on the uh, near on the right hand which can toggle between automatic and manual and then on the left here you've got your up shift and your down shift so that's quite a quite a quirky little feature for this bike um, it does take a bit of getting used to don't get me wrong if you've never ridden automatic before like i haven't it is a very strange feeling to understand how this works so yeah it's um but i do like it i've ridden it for about 40 minutes now and i i get on with it all right right so with the honda we'll have a look at the display settings here so turn it got a nice little display here which is quite colorful gives you all the information you need there on the side here we have the handbrake so what you do is you lift this towards you it clicks and it stays and that is your handbrake on this bike it is really interesting and then to release it you pull it towards you press this button and the handbrake is off quite a nice little feature so in relation to the actual storage on this bike you go put the key into here you turn it to the right it undoes and look at that that is a massive bit of storage 21 liters of storage we've got there so that's absolutely perfect and you've also got this rubber ring which seals all the weather out which gives you a nice watertight compartment and it just clicks shut now you turn the key the other way and that pops open your rear nice little support stand there and then you've got your fuel filler cap which goes there so it's a bit backwards but i do like it it's quite a nice little feature and just drop it it goes down at the rear of the bike we've got the pillion grab rails also luggage strap support and you've got your pillion foot rests this bike does come with a center stand which is a nice added feature rear of the bike you got your normal bulbs they're not led indicators they are just normal bulbs but you do by the looks of it have a led rear light the exhaust is completely standard on this one it's got no quirky noise whatsoever to it the styling is quite nice though it goes it does go quite well with the whole bike but all in all that is a really nice looking motorcycle you got the exposed radiator grill at the front your skip pan and like I was saying, you've got a nice amount of clearance there. Your single wavy disc at the front with Nissan brake, Nissan brake, sorry. For the front of this bike, I do like, that is quite a, quite a nice look, isn't it? That is good. Very nice looking bike. Right, so here we go. This is the first ride of the Honda Right, so an automatic motorcycle. First impressions, it is extremely strange. I've never, never driven an automatic motorcycle before. I have to put my uh, sun visor up, it's steaming up quite badly, which is very strange, it never normally does that. Right, so, first impressions. The seat is relatively hard, but it's not uncomfortable. It's quite firm. I think is the best way to describe it it's a nice firm seat the wind mirrors they're actually probably one of the best wind mirrors I've ever seen on the motorcycle the yeah you got no problem with visibility you're not having to bring your elbows in and that is a really weird sensation pulling up and not having to put your foot on uh, sorry not having to put a clutch in or anything there's no clutch not changing gears we're in fourth gear at the moment 30 mile fifth gear at 36 it does go out the gears quite quickly and this is a parallel twin engine so I don't know if that's got something to do with it so seats comfy wind mirror is very good seat in position perfect I, I generally love this seating position 
Now for an automatic, I thought I'd be trying to reach for that clutch and do all sorts of things, but it's just, don't even think about it. First prop corner I've been on, not too bad. Wow, look at that. We've had some serious rain in the last like hour and uh, I've had to wait a little bit longer than I would have liked to to take this bike out. I love the visibility in the wing mirrors, that is, that is perfect. Now on this bike it does actually come with a, a manual, a six speed manual. So you can actually, on your right, in, uh, sorry, your left index finger, you've got a shift up and your left thumb, you've got a shift down. Which, well, I'm just looking for the gear indicator on the dash, there we go, right, so let's, uh, let's try shift down. So that's fourth third second okay it's quite responsive we go up third fourth okay so it tried to change up for me then you can't as far as i'm aware you cannot take it out of its automatic gearing however if you do want to drop it down yeah you can so that's a nice nice feature now this bike does also come with hand guards not that I can feel that they're doing much at this moment in time, but I guess in the winter, cold air blasting in on you, it's going to be nice. It's actually a really nice bike. You can definitely feel that parallel twin. When you accelerate, you can feel it chugging away. It's two cylinders firing. Right, so what features do we have on the left handlebar? We've obviously got, like I was just saying, you've got your shift up, your shift down. You've got your hazard light, your horn, your high, your low beam, and your traction control. And again, I believe that's going to be a hold it job. Yep, hold it. Traction control turns off. Hold it again. Traction control comes on. Nice and easy. So on the right hand, we've got your kill switch, your engine start, your electronic engine start. AMR, oh okay, automatic and manual potential switches on this one. Let's uh, press that and see what happens. So it's in, okay, so I think you press the automatic and the manual button, and once you've done that, you can then actually change, and the bike won't change for you. So I've dropped it into third gear, 30 miles an hour. Okay, so you can actually make this bike a fully manual bike. If I'm coming to a stop now, yeah, it's not changing down. I like that. Nope, that's the indicators. First gear. Okay, so you can take it out of automatic and manual. You've also got your, your neutral, your drive, and your sport. It's got several sport modes. Now, in order to operate the sport modes, you press and hold it over into sport, and it'll change. You press it again, hold it over, it'll go up to your next sport setting, and so on and so on. I think there's two settings on this bike from uh, what the salesman at Honda said. Now, for those of you like myself who've never ridden an automatic bike, the gear changes are so smooth. I, I didn't even notice it went up two gears then. You can't even hear it. It just pops it up nice and easy. And to change gear with your, your index finger and your thumb, that's also quite a nice little touch. The dial actually changes colour as well. So at the moment, the, the rev count is green and it goes to blue as it goes higher. And I'm guessing as it gets fast, as you go higher up the rev range, as you end up uh, going red. I can only imagine that would be the case. So we're doing 40 miles an hour now and it's straight into sixth gear. I guess that's fuel economy for you, but it it does feel like it's too high. I'd, I'd personally be sat in fourth gear. What we'll do is we'll get to a, a national in a minute and we'll do a roll on at 40 miles an hour in sixth gear, see how it goes. But right, so here we are. We're in, we're in a national speed limit now. We're doing 39 miles an hour in sixth gear. And let's just roll on and see what happens. So it is quite, it's quite sluggish getting up there. I uh, didn't crank it open too much on my wet roads and I don't know this bike.
but it's comfortable it's it's not it's an easy ride I'm not really having many issues driving this the windscreen offers a nice bit of wind deflection I'm not really getting any wind at all on my uh, on my chest which is quite nice that's what you want on a touring bike if you're going long distance and you don't want to be fighting the elements now the strange very very strange thing a motorcycle with a handbrake literally a handbrake I never thought I'd hear myself say that let alone test ride one next to the left hand you actually have a lever that you pull you put it really hard towards you and it puts the brake on puts the rear brake on like if you're leaving your motorcycle in gear on a manual it actually applies the brake for you which is quite cool just these little quirky things which I think are really interesting and then to release it you pull it towards you press the button which is next to it on your thumb and it'll shoot forward and off you go nice little handbrake <laughs>